Silent Invaders. A true story about native, non-native, and invasive plants. Have you been in your backyard lately? There is an invasion taking place in your neighborhood right now. We need your help finding these silent invaders. With a little knowledge, you can learn to spot them. In this video, you will learn about native plants. The plants that have been living in your area a very long time. Non-native plants. Plants that were brought to your area from somewhere else. And invasive plants. Non-native plants who have become troublesome, silent invaders. We'll take a closer look at these plants and their effects on our environment. We will also learn what you can do to fight back against silent invaders in your community and natural areas. We interrupt this program to bring you a definition. Natural areas are lands that have not been developed for agriculture, business, or housing. Key words to watch for. Terrestrial, aquatic, immersed, floating leaved, Submersed, native, evolve, biodiversity, competition. Plants are essential to life as we know it. Many of us pass by hundreds of plants every day without wondering where they came from, how they got here, or what they do. How much do you know about the plants in your backyard? What about the plants in your local parks, woods, wetlands, lakes, and rivers? Why is it important to know a thing or two about the plants we live, work, and play around? You can start by investigating terrestrial plants. There are thousands of them, and they are pretty cool. You'll know they're terrestrial plants because they live on dry land. If you're lucky enough to live near a lake, river, creek, or wetland, be sure to look for aquatic plants. Aquatic plants live in, on, or under water. Immersed plants have roots underwater with part of the plant rising above water. Floating leaf plants have leaves that float on the surface. The leaves are not always anchored to the bottom. Submerged plants grow with their roots, stems, and leaves completely underwater. About 17,000 of the terrestrial and aquatic plant species in the United States are native plants. What exactly is a native plant species? In the U.S., we consider any plant that was here before European contact to be a native species. For thousands of years, native plants adapted themselves to their environment. They evolved, changed slowly over time to grow in the conditions around them. They provide food and shelter to animals. They provide stability to our shorelines and fields. Native plants are eaten by insects and animals that evolved alongside them. This, along with the climate, disease, and competition with other species, keeps native plants from growing out of control. Because native plant species usually do not grow out of control, there is biodiversity. Biodiversity is the variety of species living in an area. Many different species are able to coexist, grow side by side, within natural limits set by weather, the landscape, and competition with each other. 
When people began traveling to and from other regions, countries, and continents, ecosystems began to change. As people moved here or visited from faraway lands, they often brought plants to grow in their new homes. Non-native plants. Key words to watch for. Non-native, ballast water, agricultural, biodiversity. When a plant is brought from its original historic range and introduced to a new area, it's known as a non-native plant. Usually, non-native refers to plants from other countries, regions, or continents. Our native coontail plants are non-native to South Africa. Hydrilla from Southeast Asia is non-native to the United States. Kudzu, native to Asia and some Pacific Islands, is non-native to the southern U.S. Purple loosestrife is native to Europe and Asia and non-native to the U.S. and Canada. About 50,000 plant species are non-native to the U.S. This means they were introduced after European contact. How do non-native plants get here? Some non-native plants are introduced accidentally when they become mixed in with leaf litter or farm crops. Some non-native plants are introduced for use in aquariums and water gardens. Others hitch rides in airplane cargo, on boat trailers, and even on tires. Plants can also hitch a ride in the ballast water of large ships. Ballast water is used by ships to maintain balance at sea. Millions of tons of water are taken on board the ship and released in ports around the world each day. Of course, nature has its own way of moving seeds and plants to new areas. Many non-native plants were brought here on purpose for agricultural or other uses. Most have proven to be extremely beneficial. Plants are the basis of our food system and non-native plant species are essential to many different types of agriculture, from vegetable and grain farming to raising animals. However, some non-native plants are causing serious problems. Remember, native plants have co-evolved with the other plants and animals in their ecosystems. Non-native plants lack natural enemies, such as insects who like to eat their leaves in their new ecosystem. They may also grow and reproduce very rapidly. Because of this, non-native plants may grow faster and replace native plants, reducing biodiversity. Invasive species. Keywords to watch for. Environmental or ecological harm. Economic harm. Invasive. Outcompete. Reservoirs. Contaminant. When a non-native plant species is able to spread on its own, causing environmental or economic harm, it's considered invasive. Non-native plants can become invasive when they have no natural predators in their new habitat. Alligator weed is an invasive plant in the southeastern U.S., Texas, and California. In South America, where it's native, this beetle keeps alligator weed under control. Non-native plants can become invasive when they outcompete native plants for resources or are able to tolerate a wider variety of habitat conditions. Kogan grass, invasive in the southeastern U.S., can tolerate a wide range of conditions. For example, it can grow in many different types of soils. Because hydrilla can grow in both low and high nutrient conditions, and with even just 1% of full sunlight, it is able to thrive in places like reservoirs that don't normally support plant growth. Instead of many different kinds of plants, we could end up with just a few silent invaders. Boating, swimming, fishing, and other water activities are made impossible by some invasive aquatic plants. Invasive plants can cause economic and or ecological harm. How do you think a plant could cause economic harm? Canals, ditches, and other flood control structures can become filled with invasive plants, which can cause flooding. Here's an example of a working flood control structure. This is an example of floating invasive plants blocking a flood control structure. Invasive plants can damage, block, or interfere with human activity, costing businesses and government money. This is economic harm. How about ecological harm? What could a plant do to cause ecological harm? Invasive plants can take over and displace native plants. 
Animals that depend on native plants are often unable to adapt once the invasive plant takes over, so they leave the area or die off. Invasive plants can cover up wildlife nesting areas, preventing these animals from reproducing. Australian pine trees were introduced to Florida to use for lumber. Mostly found on Florida coasts, Australian pine growth can interfere with the nesting of endangered sea turtles and the American crocodile. Many silent invaders can pack a double whammy of both environmental and economic harm. When left alone, water hyacinth reproduces so fast that it can double its number in only two weeks. It can completely cover a river or lake and can reduce the amount of oxygen available for the fish and animals living in the water. It also prevents boaters from using lakes and rivers and spending money in the community and can be expensive to control. Remember the non-native plants hydrilla, kudzu, purple loosestrife? They are all invasive plants. Hydrilla was brought to the U.S. in the 1950s for use in aquariums. No one knew the damage it would cause. It can grow an inch per day in ideal conditions, and once it reaches the water's surface, it tops out and shades out other ecologically important plant species. Kudzu was planted for erosion control and as a food crop for animals. It grows over everything in its path, including other plants, buildings, and even road signs. Purple loosestrife was introduced from ballast water in European sailing ships. It has spread westward and infests all U.S. states except Florida, Alaska, and Hawaii. Purple loosestrife forms dense strands with thick mats of roots that can spread over large areas. Leafy spurge was introduced accidentally as a seed contaminant. It currently infests southern Canada all the way south to Texas, dominating rangeland and pastures. Its milky sap is poisonous to cattle and humans. Invasive plant and animal species are estimated to cost the United States several billion dollars each year. Invasive plants have infested over 100 million acres in the United States. If you could put all of those acres together, you'd have an area roughly the size of the state of California. That's why it's important to learn about native and non-native plants in your own natural areas. Whether the natural areas around you are hills and mountains, lakes, rivers, and other waterways, grasslands, forests, swamps, or ocean beaches, invasive plants can seriously impact them all. What can you do? Key words to watch for. Prohibit. Inspect. Dispose. Compost. Landscape. Volunteer. You can help. Learn to identify the silent invaders causing problems in your area. Federal and state laws prohibit certain terrestrial and aquatic plants from being sold or purchased. Learn what plant species are prohibited in your state. What else can you do to help fight invasive plants in your community? Never empty aquarium plants or fish into a lake, pond, or drainage ditch. They might be silent invaders. Tell family and neighbors about invasive plants and the problems they can cause. Inspect your yard, woods, garden, school, or boat for invasive plants. Dispose invasive plants in household garbage that does not get composted. Why? Because many seeds can survive composting, drying, and freezing. Landscape with native plants or non-invasive plants. Ask your garden or nursery center for them. Volunteer to help remove invasive plants in parks and natural areas. Remember, when we get rid of invasive plants, we make it possible to fully enjoy our beautiful natural areas. True or false, all non-native plants are invasive. False. Many non-native plants are beneficial to us. Not every non-native plant is a silent invader. Remember, invasive plants are those that cause, or likely to cause, economic or ecological harm or harm to human health. They make up a small percentage of plants, but cause big problems. Take a look at these plants. Can you tell which plant is a native species and which one is a troublesome invasive? We can't necessarily tell just by looking. Luckily for us, 
there are scientists across the country doing research to find out what plants may cause problems in the future and how to manage the silent invaders we already have. Thank you for your attention to this important message. Stay tuned for more up-to-date info about the continuing battle against the, the silent, silent invaders. invaders.